hopefully. Hello and welcome. Please chat if you can hear me. <laughs> okay, that's a good sign. And it's time to vote on which animal you would like to dry the eyes of first. We can do lots, but we've got to start somewhere. So. Uh, All right, so just put in the chat which one of these animals you want to dry their eyes. And also let me know if you can hear me. Bye, thanks. Okay, I'm gonna give people a couple minutes to find this and to chat. Oh, all right. Like it's live. Cool. And so we had talked recently about drawing some different animal eyes. And um, so since we're in between longer drawings, I thought today would be a great day to do that. Let's see. Yeah. Cars, yay! <laughs> we can absolutely draw all of these different eyes and um uh i guess we could just leave them all up there to draw from or uh i was thinking we could pick one and zoom in a smidge all of the links to all of these animals are in the description so you can get the source photo and and zoom in a little bit these are from pixabay uh, from all different photographers and I just tried to search for um, different animal faces where you could see their eyes pretty well. Um, the cows, oh my gosh, it was so hard looking for a photo of cow eyes because most of them have these beautiful eyelashes that cover their eyes and if their eyelashes are up they look scared. <laughs> So, so um, this was the sort of most zoomed in on an eye that I could find, and she she does have really pretty um, this sort of eyeliner thing going on, um, and let's see. Um, so yeah, what do you think? Should we just leave them all up and and uh, draw from them just as they are right now, or should we um, zoom in a little bit on one of them and then you can see what I'm drawing too? Um, either way works just great. <laughs> So welcome, um, new new people. You are welcome to uh, chat with your preference for which one we start with first, or if we leave them all up there. And gosh, I think it's it's interesting looking at all these different eyes and what would be um you know interesting about the different eyes the um the chicken has this wild expression 
and um, just that eye is so expressive and really interesting anatomy. I feel like you can really see everything. Um, whereas the cat and the um, the monkey, I, I should look at what that guy is called, and the um, actually all of the other ones. There's also this fun play of light and shadow. So the the top part of the iris is shaded by the lid, and some of them have this neat um, light reflections in there too. <laughs> They're all so tempting. <laughs> no, I love it. I, I felt exactly the same way about the voting, which is uh, why I put it out there for you guys. <laughs> so funny. I say, why not start with the owl? Because it's on the upper left and we can work our way through. Um, anytime you say, let's switch, we can absolutely do that. So I'm gonna hide. Let's see, they might pop on and off randomly here. I'm just trying to find which ones to hide. Oh, there they go. Okay, so that cat, that's a really great eye too. Oh. There's that one. Okay, and there we go. That was pretty funny. So let's see. <laughs> Oops. Uh, there we go. And that. Uh, You know, we can zoom in pretty far. Let's see. Uh, 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 uh. I keep finding myself humming to myself today, so. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. <laughs> okay. I might quick crop in on this. Um, rotate the camera a little bit. And there we go. And so let's see. This guy's eyes are gorgeous. Hmm. Owls are fun. It's like their whole face is just lots of eyes um, so my software that I'm sharing the picture and the camera view through um, I'm not an expert with but I don't see any way to crop in so I'm just Quick, do that with. Uh, I use GIMP. It's similar to Photoshop, but it's open source and free. And um, I'm so old school. I used to use Photoshop when you could just buy it and own it, and it belonged to you. And uh, so it it irritates me that. Um, <laughs> you have to pay subscriptions now, so, <laughs> so I use open source. Um, okay. And there we go. Oh. There we go. Okay, so tell me if that irritates you that I've cropped in on this owl. Um, I guess that'd be nice to just really zoom in on that eye, but then also if you wanted to drop both eyes, you have that option. And. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. What interesting faces they have. Wow, wow, wow. There we go. So today I'm planning to use um, just kind of smooth typing paper because I really enjoy the consistency of it with a pencil. Um, and I've got my number two pencil, but it doesn't show up very well on um, YouTube. So I've got a 3B and a 6B soft pencil. They tend to show up pretty well. Uh, pencil sharpener. <laughs> um, be careful if you do that. And a couple different kinds of erasers. And um, a paper towel for brushing off dust so I don't smear it all over. Um, Oh, nice. I'm glad. I'm glad that works. <laughs> so, Chris says, aren't an owl size larger than a sprain or something? <laughs> That's awesome. That's really interesting. I could absolutely see that. And, um, gosh, I can't remember what animal it was. Maybe it was a, a whale or something where the eyes are bigger than a dinner plate. And it's just... Um, it's wild to think about that. Uh, a larger sheet of paper. Good for you. Nice. Nice. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Chris is going to use a, a bigger piece of paper and put them all on one for reference and comparison. I think that's going to be beautiful. I think I'm just going to use this uh, typing paper since I, I don't know why I love this stuff so much and uh, just kind of fill up the page. Um, and let's see if I'm still on screen. Okay, so I'm gonna get kind of a strong point, a sharp point to start with and then let it soften up as I go. Just for some initial sketch in and yeah so i hope uh you have a little bit of sunshine or something nice outside where you are um so let's see <laughs> trying to decide whether to draw this whole little face that i see or um I really zoom in on the eyeball. The beak just really cracks me up. I don't know, there's something just kind of cute about that. I'm trying to decide. Yeah, let me just start with the eyeball. The So the eye on the left is pretty close to straight on, so there's no perspective issues. And let's see here, did some measuring. Oh, okay. Huh. Yeah. So for human eyes, generally speaking, you have the width of one eye between the eyes. And for this guy, it doesn't seem that different, except that there's this furry area right here covering up part of this eye. And so I'm putting some lines to say, you know, I think that on the right is a little lower on the top, on the bottom as well. It's not that much of a perspective drop off. This eye is a lot narrower because of 
because it's partially covered up. Yeah. But also because it's at an angle, but just slightly or smaller. And the pupils are fun. Like the location of the pupils. Especially with the right eye, I feel like you're staring straight at me. <laughs> I don't know if you're getting this eerie feeling like he's staring straight at you. <laughs> oh, it's been sending and reading back and forth. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, yeah, here we've been in a snowstorm again. It was so nice and sunny and then, and then snowy and now it's, so bright it's um from the light reflecting off the snow it's uh, uh really bright okay so let's see i gotta remember where i'm putting things so i've got the edge of the fur right there So I'm just kind of indicating roughly where the pupil is in relation to the outside of the eye. The it's like it's like eyeliner there, and how the two eyes relate to each other. And it looks to me like there's this perfectly round eye with the eyelid covering part of it up. So I'm just going to go ahead and it perfectly round. And then, and then bring the top down for this eyelid a little bit. And I'm drawing really softly so I can erase this stuff if I feel like it. And so the corner of the eye is lined right up so you can see that this corner is up a little, that corner comes down and then push the bridge of the Beak, I guess I'd say. And then it looks like there would be a corner of the eye right here. And then it kind of goes back up a little bit for this outside corner. What interesting animals these are. They, uh, We've had owls in the neighborhood and our neighbors are kind enough to warn us because you have to make sure you, if you've got a cat, get them inside. Um, but uh, now we, I haven't seen any owls in quite a while or you know, we used to hear them out there too. <laughs> but uh, I know they sound so lovely. It's it's fun to hear them. But uh, now we have a couple hawks that hang out in our trees, and uh, we're pretty lucky that our dogs are big enough not to worry about. I'm just trying to use some straight lines and big general curves to get the outside shape here. And so there are a couple of things. There's 
where the skin edge is and where maybe the iris edge is or a little bit of a shadow right in there. And to make it a little bit more specific, there's this kind of a corner almost where it comes down and it comes this way. It's almost a little bit squarish. And then there's more of a lip with the skin right here on the right where the iris comes up this way. And just do some hashing. And let's see, there's this nice shadow. I love this subtle shadow on this white <laughs> feathery stuff. Anyway, the down thing there. And let's see. Time to find the pupil. So pupils are fun. Um, because basically what you have is a flat disc with the pupil more or less centered in there. But then it's confused by the fact that there's this round clear stuff on top of it and so you're looking at both the outside of the dome but also the, the flat part and when you turn it sideways you have a um, where so it'll be symmetrical vertically if it's just rotating um, on a vertical axis here. So here's your axis, it's rotating around and the side that's closer to you will be a little bit bigger and the side further away will be a little bit smaller because of perspective. And the pupil will be in the middle of that, a little bit bigger on the left, a little smaller on the right. But the, um, the area, if it's, so if it's turned away like this, the area on the left will be a little bit larger because it's closer to you than the area on the right. And then that's, So that's the flat disc of the iris, but then there's this round dome on top of it that can, um, you know, make it more complicated and and interesting. And so let's see. And that's only helpful if you're looking at it and you're like, I can't really tell if there's more over here or over there. And this guy's pupil looks like it's, let's see. Yeah, looks pretty vertically centered if this was a full circle, which it's not. Just doing a sanity check. It looks like there's more space over here than there is over here. 
So I'm just kind of doing a sanity check of, you know, what am I really seeing here? And okay. And I think my eyes are just compensating for the fact that this area over here is bigger than this area over here. And let's see. Just gonna zero in on where that pupil is and <laughs> very softly. I'm not feeling super confident yet, so I'm just very softly filling that in. And let's see what else we got. Is that a little bit stronger? And, and some shadow right across here and again down here. So it looks sort of lightest right here and then a little bit darker through the center and then darker yet up here and See, maybe save some of that reflection. And, and then there's this, let's see. Bring this across a little bit more. And I'm feeling a little bit more confident with where this is. So I'm getting a little darker with it. And I think it'd be kind of fun today uh, for, for this to have one that's really kind of fleshed out and one that's pretty vague. Um, so let's see. This pupil is um, kind of blending in with the shadow from up above. Uh -huh. So. Let's see. First of all, I want to make sure I'm happy with the size of this pupil here. And make it a little flat down here. And it looks like there's clouds floating across the moon here. Okay, so. This pupil over here is kind of blending in with stuff a little bit. I do my kind of sanity check and figure out where it is, but then I might let it be a little bit generalized. And correcting my drawing a little bit. <laughs> Looking at this guy's eyes, and I just feel like we could, uh, I'd be happy drawing this for a long time. <laughs> I spend uh, weeks on this. And... <laughs> starting to get that expression that's just a little bit like, I don't know, the right eye looks irritated and the left eye looks relaxed. <laughs> it's just this shape right here. It's really funny. Um, 
uh, and this like angular area right here. It might be kind of fun sometime to play around with different eyes and just see how we could adjust them just a little bit this way and a little bit that way and completely change the expression. <laughs> uh, so. I think I remember some sort of challenge to have a, an owl that wasn't irritated. Uh, oh boy, I don't think this will do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's see. Another sanity check. Okay. So people. Yeah, these guys have to get bigger. So measuring the pupil and um, the width of the pupil is a little bit bigger than the width of the area from uh, across the iris from the pupil to the edge of the eye. Pretty close. So I'm going to keep adjusting and trying to get this quality where it looks like a perfect shape, but not necessarily a perfect circle. It almost feels a little flat. And okay. Just until it kind of feels like the right size. And so the more I look, the more it seems like there's this shadow up here. But down below, what I'm seeing is more of a really interesting, hmm. I'm trying to decide if this is like a little bit of a reflection right here or if it's pretty coloring. So, either way. Yeah, it's slightly darker right in here. And... <laughs> okay, so let's look at this one for a sec. I'm going to save a couple spots a little bit lighter right there and right along here. And get the pupil a little bit bigger just a smidge and kind of blend the stuff together up here where it's you know, the shadow and the pupil are all coming together I like that subtlety it's it's really pretty and my pencil is getting softer so it's filling in more uniformly now and I kind of like that I'm gonna put some hash marks in there something I'll go back and do that later okay so there's this nice darker area right there and Like this guy is <laughs> glaring at me right there. Oh, it's funny. I feel like I'm being harassed by my, <laughs> by my drawing as I work here. <laughs> Let me know if you're having that same <laughs> experience. That's really funny. Uh, 
I think um, some of those other animals had more of a gentle expression on. <laughs> so drawing them might be a little bit more, um, uh, you know, like having a, just a more neutral expression <laughs> aimed at us. Might be fun to get a, a photo of uh, an animal with a very adoring expression. Yeah, let me uh, take it out of the... <laughs> or... I'm tempted to just change this guy's expression while I'm working on it and uh, add in the sort of more angular qualities later on when I'm almost done with the work. Fun to see if that's possible. I think I might do that. And let's see. I think, let's see if just getting rid of this. And softening that up. Let's see if that helps it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh. oh, this guy really is. <laughs> that is really funny. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I might cover that one. <laughs> I keep going. <laughs> um, let's see. This is such a puzzle, though. Like, uh, how to get such an expression? <laughs> oh my gosh okay I'm gonna see if getting rid of that will help a little bit oh, that's a little better okay <laughs> I'll put that back in later <laughs> oh my gosh yeah I'm missing drawing hazel <laughs> she is such a sweet <laughs> expression uh, or the sheep too we had uh you know they're very relaxed and uh okay so the relationship here between the space below the people and the space above the people. Let's see if I can get that feeling more accurate. Or... And... or I guess more believable it was that. Those two aren't necessarily the same thing, accuracy and and uh, believability. And... So let me know if you ever want me to zoom in more or zoom out um, with the photo or anything else. And uh, all that stuff is adjustable. This neat little sort of 
um, shape at the edge of the eyelid. Maybe. And no. <laughs> it looks like I froze up. Let me know if um nope. <laughs> Let's see. Am I freezing up for you also, or is it just freezing up for me trying to um uh you know what I'm seeing from here? Our internet has been slow lately, which is kind of funny because we just got a letter saying that it was uh, <laughs> that our provider was going to increase things. So it's bad timing for them. Um, and Let's see. There's some nice volume to the area, the skin right around the eye. Okay, got very quiet there. <laughs> Concentrating and uh, trying to figure out this shape. And, hmm, it's interesting. The, the pupil of the eye is, of course, just a, kind of a black hole, but the um, the outside of the eye is reflective and so combining those two things to me it doesn't really look much darker than the skin around the eye and okay so I'm just going to creep up on those values really slowly so I can I change my mind. I like to give myself, um, you know, not not get stuck with something I don't like. So give myself the opportunity to change things for as long as possible. And. Out here, there's the white. I don't know whether to call that fur or feathers. It just completely looks like fur. But <laughs> anyways, uh, out here, there's the white with the shadow on it. Uh, and then here also, and then in here is just black. It looks like black skin, so. It's a neat relationship. 
And then a couple little feathery things going on here. Mmm, grows briefly. <laughs> yeah, I think it's um I think it's either YouTube or it might be me. Oh huh. having a wonky connection too. I wonder if um well say there's more people on the internet, but that's been going on for a year now. So but I wonder if there's something bigger going on. Coincidence. <laughs> and okay. There is something really beautiful about a crisp pupil right next to this like really velvety iris. And there seems to be like a much darker area right along the edge here. And it seems like it looked perfect at first look, but the longer I look, the more it looks pretty irregular. Um, it's really interesting. And then like the rest of this skin right here. And then it's interesting. So it's a little darker right along the edge of the iris, and then there's like a lighter area right in here, and then it gets darker again. Yeah, they kind of over made it bigger than it is. But, uh, can I can erase it a little bit. No. And let's see. All right. So kind of I'm not sure I've ever drawn an eyeball this big before. It's uh, an interesting experience here. There's so there's just the certain feeling you get from looking at an eye, <laughs> and. Uh, it's no different when you're making the eyeball yourself. It, it's really interesting. Okay, let me get to some clean eraser. So I carve my erasers to clean them off if I if if they're so grubby that um, just sanding them won't do. At some point, they become a drawing utensil instead of a an erasing utensil. <laughs> and right now, I want an erasing utensil. And Okay. And oh, that's so pretty. Wow, wow, wow. <gasps> so 
funny how having <laughs> our standards of beauty for other animals is so different from our standard of beauty for humans. Like really bushy eyebrows on an animal is gorgeous. It can be interesting on humans for sure, but uh, by an animal, it's just <laughs> it's beautiful. So interesting. All right, let's get some pupil. There we go. So there's this little bit of lighter area right around the pupil. So there's this very solid color here or value. And then outside of it, it's a little ring of lighter area. And then a little bit darker again. Just trying to preserve that a little bit. Pretty soon I will be maxed out at how dark I can get with this particular pencil. And it's interesting when you look at a pencil drawing, it's, um, you know, you see the values as relative. You kind of understand that the darkest value is an approximation for black. Um, you know, unless it's a very light drawing. And let's see, I'm trying to decide if I want all my edges to be the same or a little bit softer. I feel like up at the top, it needs a little bit softer. I'm really creeping up on the end of my pencil. I'm trying to control it for this as much as I can. And okay, and then get a little bit darker over here. And you know, this is all cumulative, so I can add my value all the way across the top, even if it's going to be darker in some places, I can come back and add that darkness later. I'm really wondering about this light source, if it's, you know, it's kind of uh, long and skinny. I'm wondering if it's coming through some trees or something. It's really interesting. And so there's this lighter area right here and then it gets darker again. And over here, it feels like there's more shadow. Like it's, it's even darker over here than it is in the rest of the area. Let's darken that a little bit. Okay. And these eyelashes or eyebrows, whatever this is, are so pretty. Oh my gosh. Let me get some of the like little the 
feathery feeling. Two. And let's see. Gosh, so I'm assuming that the muscles radiate out like they do with human eyes. I can't quite see in the photo, so I'm gonna not guess and instead I'm gonna draw what I see, which is just this interesting modeling. Where Interesting, there's sort of a highlight up at the top of the eye. Also, like a little bit of light reflecting off of, I'm not sure what, and then, and then it gets darker right here. I think the longer we look, the more we see. Seems to be no end to how many new things <laughs> can be found here. And let's see. So there's this neat kind of softness or um, irregularity down here. I'm just going to put some scribbles in. It's, uh, I want it to be a little bit darker, but not super uniform. This okay, and then this area, something seems weird about my shape. There. And sometimes weird shading can make a shape seem off when it's not. But I kind of think my shape is a little bit off, like they made it kind of more curvy than I really see. <laughs> oh, white fluff. I think that's a better thing to call it than whatever. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We could zoom in on a human eye. Yeah. I think that could be really neat. I think we could probably, we could do so many different eyes. We could do like kids, adults, different ethnicities, different, um, you know, older people, different angles, different eye colors. Um, boy, there's so many different things and and different expressions. Um, <laughs> we could just, uh, we could play with eyeballs for the whole next year and not run out of <laughs> interesting things to do. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. I think so next time I will throw up more <laughs> I didn't phrase that right. Next time I will put more images back up for choosing from the same ones from this time and I'll add in a human eye and um, we can kind of pick and see what to do there. Oh my gosh, this eraser is working so much better than that one. Okay, I'm going to tell you something really funny. I, um, my... I was really feeling like I couldn't paint. I had a week where my brush strokes just were not going down where I wanted them and I wasn't able to really control them very well. And I had ordered a couple new brushes, 
but I was really feeling like it was me. It wasn't the paintbrush. And then I got my brush in the mail and I'm going to show you this. I got it out yesterday and I could barely quit painting. It was so fun. Here, I'm trying to find my, there we go. So this brush I took really good care of. <laughs> it's exactly the same brush, same brand, same size. And you can see it's like all um, puffed up. <laughs> There's no way to control my point. And um, oh my gosh, my son was giving me a hard time. He's like, <laughs> you got to order brushes more often. Oh, but it was so nice. Like, And I know last time I ordered brushes, I had exactly the same experience <laughs> where it's like, oh, it's not working. I don't know like what has happened to my painting skills. And then I got the brush and uh, here, I'll show you <laughs> a couple others. So <laughs> I haven't used this one yet. It's a number two brush. It has six bucks. It's like my main tool for my job and um, I need to get on some sort of subscription plan, so I just get them in the mail. So this is what it it looked like when I realized I needed to order a new one. You can see it's um, like <laughs> so much shorter and fatter and just um, like, I don't know. And then this is how worn down they get after even longer. <laughs> you can see how much different that is. Same exact brush and brand and everything. So, anyways, I just had that experience last night and uh, <clears throat> so funny. <laughs> so, anyways, if you ever feel like you're um, you've gone backwards with your skills, look at your tools. <laughs> it might not be you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyways, so. Yeah, now that I have stepped away from this for a second, I'm just kind of looking at it and seeing with fresh eyes. And so this is the end part of all my painting processes too. It's probably embarrassing to say this out loud, but I, I'll walk far, far away. I'll close my eyes and just... I ask myself, okay, I'm going to open my eyes, have a completely blank mind, and just see where do my eyes go first, where do they go next, and am I annoyed with that? And it actually works. It's it's a good way to become objective. And so I'm just kind of looking at the form and what I've got, and if, if I feel like I'm on the right track. Cars. No kidding. And uh, <laughs> go figure. Oh, so funny. I don't, yeah. <laughs> that was silly. Okay, so I'm just going to adjust some things here that I see when I'm trying to give myself the fresh eyes. Some of these forms that. It's like there really is a line of, on the bird here, but it's like thicker in some places and thinner in other places. Um, let's see. Got a little bit more. Well, um, Carolyn Anderson just put out a uh, an article last week, I think, about how brushes aren't lasting as long as they used to, which I thought was pretty interesting. And I I know that 
I have this expectation that brushes that I can use them every day and they'll last for years. <laughs> and I feel like I have had that experience at one point, you know, maybe not quite as fresh as they started, but um, now it feels like they almost last for about three months if I use them every single day. And um, it's, uh, it's interesting, it's just hard to adjust my expectations but hearing that other artists are having the same experience um it's kind of nice it it means it's not something weird i've started doing with my brushes it's just i don't know for whatever reason they're not um you know they don't last as long Oh, looks like some eyeballs. <laughs> so did you zero in on one eye or did you draw both eyes or um, beak or anything like that? Just curious. Get a little bit of the fluff. <laughs> I like that. Let's see. So this I I do like that it's more vague. But get smidge more information in here. I might leave it without its heavy <laughs> angles. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah, uh, it's pretty pleasant having it um, not glare. So, so there's something so beautiful about this subtle shift from darker to lighter right here. Wow, wow, wow. Oh my gosh, that is really, really beautiful. Um, Hmm, I might try to look at that. Yeah, oh, good for you. Yeah, so Chris tried both eyes and lightly indicated the beak and the fluff. Nice. Yeah. And I'm just going to go backwards here a little bit with trying to indicate what exactly is happening with this soft edge of the eye a little bit of this fluff and a little bit of the darker and i'm gonna see if i can capture that um the that gentle shift from dark to light just because um Wow, wow, wow. I love that. And I, I just I want to explore that in a little bit. So let's see. So the reflection is not pure white. Yeah. Tone that down a smidge. And Okay. It feels like a, a watercolorish feeling to its eye. How just this, the sharp edges next to this gentle gradient. And let's see. Oh, <laughs> I was trying to get the irritated eyeball again. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, I guess I can look at that. 
Um, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So, um, Chris says, I suspect this would be a tricky one in color and would definitely benefit from a value study first. I think so too. Uh, since they're so saturated that they look brighter than there. I, I think that's absolutely true. And it's, uh, I think there's this double challenge here because it's, the eyes are yellow and dark yellows can be really um, tricky because you're reading it as yellow, but you're mixing it as more of a green or brown. And, uh, and that makes it really complicated and interesting. Oh gosh, I feel like we should come back and try that. <laughs> Let me know if you would have fun with sort of an impromptu um, sort of painting thing. <laughs> Trying to get these eyeballs. Uh, and gosh, I feel like the Zorn palette might. Oh. We could maybe use the Zorn palette and switch out, like add add an extra color, like in, instead of just yellow ochre, we could add in um, like almost a lemon yellow, maybe, or a, a you know one of the more greenish yellows, like a, a cadmium light. Or... And. There's this really interesting thing happening up here with the um, saturation shift, where it's brighter right in this area. And <laughs> no shortage of future projects. So true. No shortage at all. Okay, so this reflection, it comes right in here like that. And then there's this lighter area right around the edge. Oh, just like there's in the other eye. Oh, fun, fun, fun. And it fades off over here. So it's hidden by the reflection. Oh, that's interesting. That's really pretty. Okay, so. That. And. I'm sort of outlining the reflection. I have to erase that back. Let's see where that goes. And so turn off my eraser. And see what we've got. So the reflection starts up here. There's this shadow across. Wow, this is such a beautiful eye. And then the reflection starts at the bottom of the shadow, the same place these reflections start. Okay. And kind of comes down and right across. Boop. Cool. And then here <laughs> I kind of started putting up. Oh, Awareness. There. So. Well, let me know uh, how that went and if you had fun and um, I really feel like I'm being stared at here. <laughs> and yeah. So let's 
see. So thanks for joining me. I think I'm going to um, end the live stream, but there's a link to the owl photograph in the description um, directly from uh, Pixabay. Um, I would love to know how things went. Um, if you feel like you're done with what you want to do with the owl or if you'd like to see more of this owl before we move on to the next animal um, and or or person <laughs> yeah I think next time uh, maybe part of the decision can be <laughs> What kind of expression we're going to be looking at while we're drawing? <laughs> so funny. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I just, you can tell I couldn't bear to put that like harsh <laughs> corner back in the eye. <laughs> I save that for, uh, for uh, when I feel like I'm done. I'm not going to do anything else with it. But. Well, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week. Um, I will be back tonight for the workshop. So um, I'll send out that uh, reminder pretty soon. So that's in um, almost three hours. And um, so I hope to see you there and, um, and have a wonderful rest of your week.